In this video, I will be explaining how to solve quadratic inequalities. Just as a note to start off, if you hear any weird noises, my roommate's eating chips right now, so that's what's going on. So I'll start off, or I'll teach you how to do it, by showing you an example. We have x squared minus 3x is greater than 4, and we want to solve this inequality. Well, the first step would be, oh my, the first step would be to get everything on the same side. So we have x squared minus 3x minus 4 is greater than 0. And the best way really to solve quadratic inequalities is by visualization. And what I mean by that is we're basically just going to draw a rough sketch of the graph and through that we're going to understand what the final inequality is. So let's get to solving it. We have our equation x squared minus 3x minus 4 is greater than 0. We can factorize this. We're going to try and find the root. So from this we get x squared 4 can be um, let's say 4 and 1. So x squared plus x minus 4x minus 4 is greater than 0. x times x plus 1 minus 4 times x plus 1 is greater than 0. x minus 4 times x plus 1 is greater than 0. So now if we were to draw this in a graph, we would have our y-axis and our x-axis. This is our graph x squared minus 3x minus 4. We have one intercept at x is equal to 4 and one intercept at x is equal to negative 1. And we have a minimum point, so it'll look something, our graph will look something like this. So it'll go up on both sides. Now if you notice in our original inequality, where we had x squared minus 3x minus 4 is greater than 0, we see that our equation well, is greater than 0. So we want to look at all, all of the points on our graph where the value for y in our equation, this is our y-axis, where the value for y in our equation is greater than 0. Well, we see that from this point onwards, all of these points are positive from here to here. All of these points are negative, so let's just make negative signs. And over here, all of these points are positive. So we can easily write that out. If we look at everything on the right side over here, where all this stuff is positive. Well, this right here we call it as x is equal to 4. So x is greater than 4 and over here on this side where everything is positive well since we're going from right to left we can say that since this value is negative 1 x must be less than negative 1 so this is our final inequality let's write this side by side x is less than minus 1 and another thing that we should note is well obviously both of these equations or both of these inequalities can't be true at the same time. So that means that x is either greater than 4 or x is less than negative 1 if we want this whole entire equation to be greater than 0. Let's look at another example. So in this case, let's say that the coefficient of x squared is negative. So we have negative x squared minus x plus 6 is less than zero. So once again we start out by factorizing our equation. So we can take minus six, so two and three, so minus x squared plus plus two x minus three x plus six is less than zero. Factorize this minus x times x minus two minus three times x minus two is less than zero we get minus x minus 3 times x minus 2 is less than 0. And once again, a great way to understand this is by drawing or sketching our graph. We have our y-axis and our x-axis. And our two points of intersection are, well, this gives us a value of x is equal to um, negative 3, and this gives us a value of x is equal to 2. So x is equal to negative 3 is roughly here, and x is equal to 2 is here. 
And since the coefficient of x squared is negative, we will have a maximum point. So that means that our graph will look something like that. <clears throat> and this right here is 2, and this is minus 3. Now if we look back at our equation, our original equation, we'll see that our entire equation is less than 0. Therefore, we want to find all the values for which our expression is negative. So if we look at our graph once again, from this point onwards, all of the values of y are negative, and from this point onwards, all of the values of y are negative. So this is all negative space. This small portion of our graph is positive, and this over here, beyond negative 3, once again is negative. So if we're to say for what points this equation or this inequality is true, then we say that x is less than negative 3, and x is greater than 2. So once again, this is either or. All right, now let's look at one more example. We use the same equation. Let's say that we had minus x squared minus x plus 6. But in this case, it is greater than or equal to 0. Well, we already factorized this up above. We got minus x minus 3, and then x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. For So now once again what we want to do is we want to find all of the points where this equation or this expression is either greater than or equal to 0. So let's look back at our graph. So for what point is our equation greater than or equal to 0? Well, if we look closely, this part of our graph is above the x-axis, therefore it gives us positive values and is greater than or equal to zero. All the values of x that span this part of our graph is are what we're looking for. So we have over here x is negative three, so x can be greater than or equal to negative three, and so notice how this is inclusive, and x is less than two. So for all of these values, our graph is positive or greater than equal to zero.